Okay, so you've probably seen the new Pyro Simulation in Cinema 4D. And you've probably also seen that you can make some nice looking smoke simulations with it. But today I'm gonna show you another way that you could use the new Pyro Solver. Because today we're gonna use the smoke to evict particles and cloner objects. So, if that sounds exciting and you want to learn something like this, well, follow along because this is going to be a fun one. So for this technique, I'm going to start off by showing you how I make the pyro setup. So, first of all, we need some things. We need a object that we can emit our smoke from. I'll choose a torus. And then we need a plane. And I'm going to make this plane a little bit bigger here, like this. And then I'm going to make the torus 15 in the ring radius, and I'm going to make the pipe radius 1. So we have this little tiny thing here. Then I'm going to move it up 5 centimeters, so it's just above our ground. So now that we have our emission objects, we are going to go up to our torus here. And I'm going to go to simulation tags. And there's a new tag added called pyro. And we're just going to click on that. And then I'm going to go to my plane. And I'm going to go to simulations. And I'm going to choose this collider. Oh, this collider here. And we're going to put a collider on our plane. All right. So let me just show you what we made. So as you can see, it's really easy to just make some simple fire and smoke. But we need to make this a lot better before we can use it. So I'm going to go to this pyro material that has been created for us. And I'm going to first of all look at this pyro tab. So I'm going to bring the voxel size down. So that means that we get smaller voxels and better quality sim as you can see here, but it's also a bit heavy, so you might need to turn it only to two centimeters. But I'm going to turn it to one centimeter in the size. Then in our general tab, I'm going to turn the buoyancy to plus five, and I'm going to turn the temperature buoyancy down and the vorticity strength down. And in the turbulence section, we're just going to let it be for now. And our combustion section, we can also just hide that because we're not going to change anything here. And we can go to our dissipation tab and we can also just close that. All right. So now we have this really weird looking blob with fire in it. And that's because we need to go to our tag down here. And we need to set our object voxel size to 2. And then we need to set the sub steps to 1. And then we can keyframe our surface emitter from being on at frame 0 and being off at frame 10. All right. And then in our density tab, we can set the set value to 20. And in our temperature tab, we're just going to turn off our temperature. And as you can see, we have this nice looking animation here. So I'm just going to hide my plane for now so we can see what's going on. Oh, I can see that we need to put our torus to 10 centimeters actually for this to work. Yeah, that's much better. You can see how much more violent it is. All right, so I'm also going to hide my torus. And the last thing we actually need is to go up to the simulation here on the forces, and we can say a attractor. And this attractor, we can go to the object tab, and then we're going to set the strength to minus 20, because we don't want it to attract, we want it to push things away. Then we can set the speed limit to 2000 centimeters. And then we're going to set it to force mode. And then I'm just going to bring it up to 15 centimeters on the y axis. 
So it's above our Taurus here. And as you can see, we have this much more violent explosion. And I can see that I actually need to select this tag and I need to change my keyframes so we get the surface emitter much sooner. So as you can see, we don't have this Taurus that's hanging around. All right, so this is looking so much better. And now that we have this smoke here, we actually need to cache it before we can use it. So I'm just gonna go to frame zero and go to my pyro simulation here. I'm first of all gonna go to my object and I'm gonna turn off temperature because as you remember, we turned off the temperature and we're also gonna turn off velocity. So the only thing we want is density. So we can now go to the cache tab I'm gonna cache the scene and I'm just gonna make a cache that's called cache 3 I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna press save. And now it's just gonna run through and cache our simulation. And it's actually pretty fast. So as it's coming to 100%, we might get an error. Yeah, there it is. So we are maximizing our VRAM, but that really doesn't matter. And this pop-up, you can also just press OK to. And the only thing it actually did, these two pop-ups, is just that it removed our cache link here. So we just need to find it again. And mine was here. And yeah, now we actually have our cache. So as you can see, we have this nice VDB mesh in cinema. And if I just press something that you can see here, you can see that we have some nice looking smoke. Wow, cool. So this explosion we're gonna use to drive our particles. So let's make some particles. So I'm just gonna go to simulate and press an emitter. I'm just gonna turn it around 90 degrees. I'm gonna go in here and turn off the speed. Then I'm gonna turn up our viewport birth rate and our render birth rate. Then I'm gonna set the stop emission to two. And, and yeah, that should be it. All right, so what is happening right now? Well, we still have a attractor and this attractor is just spreading all of our points out. So we need to do two things now. We need to have our attractor be enabled when the smoke hits our particles. And we also want our particles to follow the outline of our smoke. So we can easily do that with two nodes. And the first node we already have. So in our attractor, we can go to the fields tab and then we can just pull our pyro inside. And if we just take a look, if we just hide my pyro, and I know that we need a little bit more particles. All right. And then we actually need to pull up the emitter a tiny bit from the ground. So we are intersecting with our pyro sim. And as you can see, when our pyro effect hits our particles, they are getting affected by the attractor. So let's just see the particles. So as you can see, it really doesn't look that great at all. All right, so we need to do another thing. We need the particles to follow the shape of our pyro. And to do that, we're gonna go to simulate forces and we're gonna use a field force. And in our field force, we need our pyro sim again. And then we need to change the velocity type to change direction. And it probably might not look like something is happening here, but I bet you something is. So I'm just gonna increase our particles even more to a million particles spread over two frames. So it's actually two million particles. 
And as you can see, we're getting a lot more detail now. And it's actually the effect we're looking for. So I'm just quickly going to scale up my emitter here so we have a bigger canvas to play with. And as you can see, we have this nice looking animation. But we still have a lot of particles that are fleeing from our simulation. And we don't really want that. So we've, I'm first of all just going to turn off this torus because we don't need it anymore. So I'll just hide it. And then I'm going to go to simulate forces again and then use a deflector. So this deflector, I'm just going to turn 90 degrees and I'm going to make sure that it's underneath our emitter. And then I'm going to scale it up. So in our deflector, we're just going to turn off the bounce and I'll just show you what this looks like. So all of the particles are now floating on the surface underneath. And if you don't like the way that the particles are spreading out, then there's actually another trick you can do. So let's forget about the deflector method and let's go to the forces again and let's create a destructor. So this destructor object is just a cage where any particles inside of the cage are just going to be deleted. But I can turn up the randomness so it takes longer for some particles to be deleted and shorter for other particles. So I've just made the size a little bit bigger here and I've placed it underneath. And as you can see, we're just deleting those particles that are going underneath. But we're deleting them randomly. So I could turn this up and as you can see, we're almost deleting none of them. And I can turn it down and we're deleting everything. So I'll just turn it to something like 30. So another thing that we can do to make this a little bit more nice to look at is that we can actually go and move the emitter up and down. So what I mean by that is if we look at our simulation, we can have different points that it's interacting with. So if I set my emitter to the lowest, lowest possible setting, like right here, you can see that we're getting all of the ground detail of the emission. But if I'm putting it up at the top, like here, we're just getting the tops of our smoke simulation. All right, so I'm gonna find a good middle ground here and you can actually just have your timeline running. And as you can see, it's a bit too low there. And wow, this is kind of nice actually. And I'm just gonna pull it a bit up like this. So we get these nice streaks out here. And one more thing that we can do to make this a little bit more nice, because now we have this square and let's say you don't want a square and you actually just want the particles that are moving to be seen and not these other ones that are static. So a quick way to do that is to go to our MoGraph things here and we're gonna select a tracer. And we're going to put our emitter inside of our tracer. And then we're going to limit it from the end. And we're going to limit it by two. And if I just turn off my emitter now, you can see we're only seeing our tracer. And it's looking so much nicer. So I'm just going to turn off the grid, working grid here, and the world axis. And as you can see, we have this nice looking animation. So if we want more particles, the limit is actually a million. So we can just turn it up. But what we can do is that we can add more frames that it's emitting on. So let's say it's emitting on four frames instead. So it's four million particles. And you can see my computer's chugging a bit, but we have 
so much more detail and so many more particles. So now I'm gonna show you another advection technique involving cloners. All right, so I've just imported our pyro simulation here, and I'm just gonna show you how to get another different result with the same pyro simulation. So what I'm gonna do here is actually go and make a cloner. And this cloner, I'm gonna make a box and put it inside of. But first of all, we're gonna make the size one centimeter by two centimeters by one centimeter. And I'm gonna put it inside of my cloner. And I'm gonna make this size of the grid two centimeters by two by two. And then we're gonna set it to multi-instance. And I'm just gonna make a lot of clones here. Just a bunch of them. So it's filling our grid. And I think we can even make this a little bit taller still like this and then the only thing we need here is actually to go down to our effectors here and select our target effector so we're going to put it inside of our effector stack here then we can go to our target effector we're going to set the strength to 500 and then i'm going to pull the target up to around 100 or maybe more centimeters so we get this circle in the middle here and i don't know why it makes this but it's important that we get a little circle and that we don't get a spike like this so what do we need to do now well we need to go to our fields tab pull in our pyro simulation again and let's see what's happening so nothing is happening so as you know from before, we actually need to pull our cloner up into our pyro simulation so it's actually intersecting with our cloner. And as you can see, still nothing is happening. But it is actually happening. And the reason why we can't preview it is because we have a little problem with cinema and it's the feedback loop so cinema sometimes just doesn't want to update each frame and it's really annoying so how can we do that well we can go to our target here and we can just and we can just animate one of the parameters so what i always do is i'll go here to my c value and i'll just keyframe it at zero and then I'll go to the in frame. So I'll just put 0 0.1 here. So what we have now is each frame that is getting updated. And that's a easy little trick if you ever have anything that's not updating. So we need to make this a lot better because now it's really wild and everything is glitching. So it's not really pleasing to look at. So we need to go to our target effector. We'll go to the fields tab and then we'll make a curve. And in this curve, I'm just gonna pull the endpoint here. So we are actually clamping the data. So that means that all of this data is gonna be used now. And that's really important for us because we need to use all the data that we're getting from our pyro simulation. So if I turn it on here, you can see that we're getting a lot more data out of this one. But it's still not looking great. So what can we do? Well, we can go down here and we can select a delay. And in this delay, it's actually set up for us already. It's set to smooth mode and it's set to 50% in strength. So you can see that we're getting a much nicer finish when we're using this smooth on our pyro simulation. So one other thing we could do is actually go to our cloner and then we can go and make a plane effector and then we can go to the parameter tab, turn off position, turn on scale, turn on uniform scale and minus one. So we hide them. Then we can go to our fields tab here 
and we can pull in our pyro again. We can also pull in a invert because we actually want the inverted result. So as you can see, this is so much nicer. So one more thing we need to do is go here to our target and we need to copy these two and we also need to put them in here like so and we have this nice colorful wave and i'm just going to turn off the color so you can see what it's doing we have this really weird but nice looking advection so you could easily just turn this plane effect off so you can get the insidium look from their x particles trailer but i'm gonna turn it on because i think it's much more fun when we also have the scale on these particles. So that was how to use the new pyro simulation tool in a whole nother context. And you can expand on this idea. You can use it for anything you want. It just has to be in the MoGraph or the particle system. So there is loads of possibilities with this technique. And I'd like to see what you guys come up with. So if you have anything you want to share with me, then share it on my Discord. It's down in the description. And what's also down in the description is my Instagram, where you can also share all your images and you can write to me if you have any problems. And of course, write a comment if you have any problems with this, because I'm quick at answering all your questions. So at last, if you could do me the favor of liking the video if you liked it, and also subscribing if you want more content then it would really help me out making these videos for you guys. Because the only thing I want is to make good tutorials and I want your feedback on it. So please share it with me. So with this knowledge, go out, have a nice day, take a cup of coffee, and then I'll see you next time to some more cinema magic.